Hi, I'm Michelle Chalfant, psychotherapist, holistic life coach, and human, just like you, learning to navigate life challenges. With over 25 years experience, I teach people how to get healthy using the adult chair model. The adult chair model is where simple psychology meets grounded spirituality, and it teaches us how to become healthy adults. From anxiety and depression to codependency and relationship issues, you can use the adult chair for just about anything. Each week, I share practical tips, tools, and advice from myself and a wide range of experts on how to get unstuck, how to live authentically, and how to truly love yourself, all while sitting in your adult chair. Welcome to the Adult Chair Podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Adult Chair Podcast 2021. We have arrived. I hope you all had a lovely holiday season. I am very happy to be here with you all in the, on this January, mid-January already, 2021. Let's see. For those of you that are wondering, what is the adult chair? <laughs> if, you're, if you don't know and someone handed you this podcast, you can head on over to, to theadultchair.com. There's a wealth of information there about the adult chair, which basically is living in the healthiest version of you to boil it way down. And you will find something there that is brand spanking new and 100% free, which you know I love giving you guys, something we've worked really hard on for all of you. And it this applies to everyone on the whole planet. How about that? So think about this. Think about a place where you can go meet people that are like-minded, that are working on themselves, that are working hard to live in their adult chair. And these people you can actually mingle with. These people you can meet and get together with. Yes, sir, re. <laughs> TAC Gatherings is here. We have just launched this month TAC Gatherings. Think of adult chair meetup groups. That's it. It is there here. So go to theadultchair.com forward slash TAC, T-A-C, gatherings, and you will find that we have cities all over where we're meeting. And because of COVID, of course, the first three months of the year, we're meeting via Zoom, but we are meeting. And come April, my fingers are crossed. You can't see them, but cross your fingers with me here. We'll be meeting in person. And when you go to TAC gatherings and you don't see, if you don't see your city listed, let us know if you would like to either join a group or lead a group in your city, state, or country, because we are doing this worldwide, people. We'd love to have you. We'd love to have you join us. We'd love to have you lead. Let us know. It is here, the adult chair gatherings. So, so happy about that. What are we talking about today? Today I had on the show someone that I felt like really would help us into our adult chairs, but it's another avenue or angle to get in there. And we're talking today about Chinese medicine. I had Brody Welch on the show. She is someone that is a, an acupuncturist. She is someone that practices holistic medicine, herbs, qigong, all the things, Chinese medicine, and she's brilliant. And I had her on because I, I wanted to give people another way into the adult chair. We talked about acupuncture, what it is, how it can help us, not just physically, but mentally and emotionally find greater balance. It's a beautiful, let me say this, Chinese medicine is a beautiful holistic approach to bringing balance into our lives. And if we're out of balance, we cannot live in the adult chair. You've got to have balance. So Brody and I talked about presence, the power of processing emotions and how if we don't process emotions, what can happen in the body. We talked about anxiety. We talked about a little bit about lifestyle, diet, body work, herbs, qigong, all of it, all the things to do with Chinese medicine and how it can help you today. We even went through, she offered us a beautiful, very quick little qigong exercise to help us to bring balance into our lives right now, right now in this moment. So we had a great conversation. I think you're really, really going to enjoy this show. So let me just tell you a little bit about Brody before we get started. Brody Welch is a licensed acupuncturist. She is a board certified herbalist, holistic self-care strategist, Chinese medicine educator, and podcaster. 
Brody helps self-aware, high-achieving women break the cycle of stress, overwhelm, and self-sabotage so they can enjoy the lives they're working so hard to create and truly embody self-respect. Brody is the founder of Life in Balance Acupuncture in Corvallis, Oregon, where she's been treating patients since 2003. She's also the creator of and host of A Healthy Curiosity, a podcast that explores what it takes to be well in a busy world. It is a pleasure to have Brody on. So here we go with Brody Welch. Welcome, Brody Welch, to the Adult Share Podcast. Oh, I'm so excited to be here, Michelle. I love your show and it's I love introducing people to Chinese medicine. Well, thank you. And I am really, really excited to have you here to talk about Chinese medicine. I think that it's such an important thing and so many people do not know what Chinese medicine is and it can really help us um, on the emotional level as well as physical, mental, spiritual, et cetera. So, um, but I know a lot of people don't even know what it is. They don't know what Chinese medicine is. So I'd love to start with what the heck is Chinese medicine? <laughs> That's a great question. Um, so Chinese medicine is a complete system of healthcare that originated in China thousands of years ago. And it has different branches. The, probably the most well-known branch is acupuncture, but lesser known branches include Chinese herbology, qigong, or the uh, um, cultivation of energy internally, lifestyle and diet, like you, how to use how to apply the philosophy of Chinese medicine to the way that you're living, um, body work, meditation, even feng shui is considered potentially a part of Chinese medicine. So it's a way of looking at the world. It's a way of looking at the body as an ecosystem rather than a, the body as a machine made up of separate parts. Chinese medicine sees the body as this interconnected system of different kinds of energy yin and yang energy being uh, the two that we talk about most. And the premise of Chinese medicine is to create health by creating balance in the body, helping the body find mm. its way back to homeostatic balance. And really, and that encompasses not only our physical systems, but also our mental and emotional and consciousness mm. um, it sort of dimensions as well. So, and one of the beautiful things about Chinese medicine is that that there really is no separation between body, mind, and spirit, and that all of these things need to be considered. So instead of going to a dermatologist and a gastroenterologist and a uh, and going to a sleep clinic for problems that you might have, an acupuncturist can look at lots of different physical symptoms and emotional symptoms and tie them together because we see the body as that really one diseased root can give rise to lots of problematic branches or symptoms that we might be experiencing. But the ability to tie all of those things together into one pattern that we then treat, again, with a, by, teaching, by teaching our patients how to be present, how to process emotions, in addition to wielding acupuncture needles and prescribing herbs that are all aimed at steering a person away from the territory of disease and symptoms and back towards the zone of health and balance. So this is great. So when you say, um, and first of all, I love that it's holistic, like Chinese medicine, acupuncture, something I've used for years. And I do love, it's so holistic. I can go in um, and see my ac ac acupuncturist for anxiety or for a backache. And it's, yes. it's amazing how the results that I get are very quick. And I feel like a million bucks when I get off the table, like jello. Like I'm like, woo. Mm. I always feel like so um, like, like my nervous system has had a reset while I'm on that table. So no matter what's going yeah. on emotionally, it's like, oh my gosh. So when you say um, presence and processing emotions, how would someone in Chinese medicine help with those two things? Because those are really important parts to, of course, living in the adult chair, how, yes. and which is the healthiest version of ourselves. How does an acupuncturist or Chinese medicine practitioner help with these two things? Well, first and foremost, we can help people see the connection between how it is they're feeling in their body and what kinds of things they're doing in their life and how they're feeling. 
And that may just sound so dead simple, but so many of us are moving so fast. We're packing our lives and and trying to do more for other people, to do more, uh, to achieve more. And we leave very little room for processing emotions. So it's like everything that you kind of decide you're going to get to later, you know, that it, that it, it's like shoving it in the closet and eventually the closets get too full and start spilling out into the room and we start and it starts to manifest starts to interfere with our lives whether that's mm-hmm. showing up in a physical way right a symptom like insomnia or digestive issues or hot flashes or whatever or it might be showing up as anxiety or depression or um, just that knot in the pit of your stomach and and being able to have someone who's listening to you who's maybe looking at your tongue taking your pulse these systems of diagnosis that we use to figure out what's going on in this ecosystem um, because sometimes it can be an issue of uh, that, that, well, sometimes it's something that we need to address on the physical level, right? It's something like, Mm -hmm. okay, your back hurts. Um, Your back hurts partly because you're sitting too much and you're sitting too much because you think you, that's what you need to do in order to be perfect, right? Or to, Mm. to, to get something done. Mm -hmm. So we can kind of look at like, well, you know, if you were to stretch more, if you were to move more, if you were to breathe into this area, if you were to put some moist heat on that, you know, like there's, there's plenty of things that all of us know we can do better, right? With respect Mm -hmm. to our diet or our lifestyles or just taking care of ourselves in general in order to fully embody the self-respect that we deserve. And that we don't do these things because we are attached to particular survival strategies that may have served us well at one point in time, but which might be outdated. So an acupuncturist can hold up the lens of this philosophy. We can think about, you know, in my life, am I living, am I, are yin and yang in balance in my life? And so just to, to find those terms really briefly, we live in a society that prioritizes speed and productivity and how it looks and not how it feels. We all know that we do our best work when we've gotten a good night's sleep, but you're considered lazy if you take a nap. You know, like there's all these cultural messages and programming that we have to overcome in order to have a prayer of feeling present, right? Most of us are moving way too fast and and doing way too much to so that all these little things that happen in life, uh, there's a backlog and that backlog is felt as stress and tension in the body, whether mm. that's tight muscles or whether that's uh, hormonal imbalances or what, however it's showing up, there's like no state of our physicality does not have a corresponding emotion that goes with it. And mm. so helping people who might not be in touch with what's going on emotionally, but they know that they've got a headache, you know, that a, a lot of times the body is what is what the subconscious or what the unconscious is, is telling us. And in Chinese medicine, we have a very sophisticated framework for figuring out what kinds of symptoms tend to impact what kind of, of um, organ systems in the body and therefore what to do with our energy to make it flow better and to make it more in balance. So on the, the emotional level, every emotion corresponds with a different organ system in the body. And that's that's one of the very simple ways that we think about uh, about how to help someone relax, how to and, and really from a biomedical perspective for people who want to think about if they spend way too much time in fight or flight or fight flight freeze fight flight freeze fawn however you want to think about it mm-hmm. you have you're you're perceiving an emergency everywhere right you're perceiving like, that your nervous system which was designed to help you flee from tigers on the savanna is suddenly seeing emergencies in everyday life um and and that is causing a state that's it's moving us from a place of ease and free flow into a place of feeling contracted and stressed. And when we're there long enough, that spills over and becomes anxiety. Um, and that can impact us in, in a variety of ways. But just simply, I often have patients say that they feel better, but even before they get on the table and even before the acupuncture lets them sink into that parasympathetic relaxation state that's kicked off by our body's natural endorphins and, and neurotransmitters, that just having an opportunity to unpack, um, as you might in the therapist's office, um, just like be able to make those connections of like, oh yeah, this is what I'm needing more of. This is what I'm not getting enough of as medicine in my daily life. But instead of approaching it from a therapeutic model of like working with people by going into the past and helping them unpack, um, I work more from a coaching standpoint of like, what can you do differently in the present to steer your ship in the direction of balance? Mm, I love that. So 
how do you guide people into more presence or into balance? So I, you'd said acupuncture. And of course, yeah. for the people that don't know what that is, I'm guessing that most people do know what that is. But can you say this in like two sentences, like what acupuncture is, just in case there's someone listening that goes, oh, but isn't that scary? Isn't that yeah, dangerous? Sure. Or, you know, just define it, you know, briefly. Sure. Acupuncture is the art and science of inserting tiny hair-like flexible filaments into portals of consciousness called points in the body to send a message to tap into the body's natural intelligence and stimulate our body's natural healing process. Super not scary. About 20 to 30 acupuncture needles can fit inside one hypodermic. So nothing's mm. being inserted or extracted. It's just, uh, it's, it's like playing a chord on a piano or um, control alt delete on your keyboard. You, you're, you're sending a message by combining different points that have different messages, different personalities, different gifts um, on for, for the body to, uh, to help the body heal itself. Mm, thank you. Thank you. I was putting needles in little baby needles, little yeah. teeny tiny baby needle. <laughs> um, flexible filaments. Flexible filaments. I've never heard it called like that. Um, I love this because, you know, most people will go to a doctor and allopathic and they would, you know, I'm coming in for anxiety. Here is the pill for ang or depression yes. or um, I'm type A. Well, then you need this to slow you down. You know, it's very, yes. hmm, well, not, I don't even have a word for it. I love the more holistic yeah. approach where it's like, what's yeah. causing me to be? Yeah. Right. Let's look this. at the context in yeah, which like in this is occurring and let's look at what else is showing up also. Right. And so, so for example, um, it, we, we even look at if, if we, if we stay, stay with anxiety for a moment, five different people with anxiety might be given five different Chinese herbal mm -hmm. prescriptions and five different Chinese acupoint prescriptions because it's showing up in different ways. And for someone, for someone who carries their anxiety as difficulty falling asleep and heart palpitations, we're going to treat the heart channel for someone right. whose anxiety manifests as lack of appetite or that pit of your stomach uh, feeling, uh, then we might treat the um, we might treat the liver and the spleen, uh, you know, or the liver and the stomach. And so, so the idea of that it's not about treating a condition; it's about treating a person. Yeah. Right? And that and that and that looking at how that person. Okay, so let's look at the root of that anxiety. Right? Is is mm -hmm. it, for example, we know that um, we know that about the gut brain access. We know that uh, much of the serotonin and GABA and other um, neurotransmitters that help us relax and slow down are actually produced in the gut. So it could be that for someone, their anxiety is going to be really helped by changing their diet, right? So that their gut can can make the, more of the right stuff, right? And for other people, it may be that they need to um, subtract some things from their life or that they need to look at the fact, you know, that, that like, oh, well, what's making me anxious is my desire to be perfect or show mm. up, you know, or to that feeling like I'm unacceptable unless I meet this benchmark or unless I keep everyone in my life happy. And so that, and so therefore, you know, and, and then, and then we go a level deeper. Okay. Well, so, so what survival strategy might I be implementing in mm. Chinese medicine? We look at, um, we think about, the five element types, right? So we think about wood, fire, earth, metal, and water as these different elements of nature. If it exists out there in nature, it exists in our bodies also. And so usually um, our personalities and temperaments fall into, you know, kind of these, these five, our, our strengths and weaknesses, usually like our greatest strength is our greatest weakness. And so mm -hmm. the more that we know about ourselves, the more we know about our tendencies and our habitual responses to the world, um, it's like our personalities are just a bad habit, you know, like mm, that it, right, in a lot right. of ways, right? So understanding. Mm -hmm. So for example, I have a lot of drive and strive. I have a lot of upward, outward energy. I want to teach. I want to lead. I want to, you know, be, I want to do more. I want to, I have a lot of yang energy in my body. Mm -hmm. And that tends to whack me out, right? Because then I start to get stressed out when I feel like I'm not doing enough. If I pan back from that and I realize that I'm buying into a limiting belief of who I need to be, mm. right? And I give myself permission to do less. I give myself permission to relax and enjoy. I give myself permission to, um, you know, like, I don't have my identity so tightly wrapped around achievement 
ah, suddenly I can breathe. Suddenly I can relax. Suddenly I can sleep better. Suddenly hormone balance comes back into, you know, that like, all these so things true. that I might be experiencing changes and it changes because I have an insight or I, or because I'm giving myself permission and space, right? So often in our society that wants us to do more and, and move faster, we, we don't have enough time and space to process life. And some one of that's probably the most common prescription I write down on my little self care pads that I give to patients is, it is really giving yourself permission to be with difficult emotions as they arise. Emotions are one of the three causes of disease according to Chinese medicine, wow. and yeah. they're only a problem when we when we deny that they're there, or when we spin a story that makes them stick around longer than their natural lifespan, which is really only a you know, 90 seconds, a couple yeah. of minutes, right? Yeah. We let it flow through us and then it's gone. And so, um, so just giving ourselves permission to, uh, to have both yin and yang energies, right? To, to, and to be able to bring all of those five elements, like we all have five elements within us. We all have yin and yang energy within us. They show up differently, which is why we're all unique, right? We all, we all aren't the same human being. And it's about being the most balanced version of yourself that there is, right? It's not about everyone yes. being the same and not comparing yourself to anybody else just be oh, you yeah yes. and, and really yes. and a lot of times people you know like it's so easy to if you're suffering from self-esteem issues right to not value your own gift and that's one of the premises in chinese medicine is to is to amplify the righteous chi right mm. to to help people see okay yeah you, you know like maybe you've got a weak immune system or maybe you've got a weak digestive system maybe you're prone to depression maybe you're prone to ocd whatever it is um but it's like, okay, so that's the thing you need to work on. But also there are systems within you and um, personality traits and characteristics that really shine. And, you know, that, and so not like being able to value what we have within ourselves is, is one of the core lessons of Chinese medicine. Um, health being defined as self-actualization and living in mm. accordance with who we really are and, and, and maximizing like your own path. If you believe that you were put on this planet for a purpose, Chinese medicine would say that that purpose lives in, in your kidneys, right? In your, in your Jing, your, your, um, your life essence and being mm. able to have your consciousness recognize your life essence is another goal of Chinese medicine, right? So being able to recognize what's true for me versus what are the values that I might've adopted and things that I might be doing that don't really fit with who I am, because that might be what, what's making us sick. Mm. I love that. I love that emotional piece with it. Let's talk for a minute about, or a few minutes about, I'm thinking about Qigong. So if someone does yeah. not like yoga, yeah, someone does not like to meditate, this mm -hmm. is a great alternative. So tell Absolutely. us about Qigong and what the benefits are. What is it and what are the benefits? Sure. Yeah. So Qigong, I like to think of as yoga's less popular, less sexy cousin, mm -hmm. right? So Qigong is, um, it combines breath, movement, and intention. So it can be as simple as breathing in, bringing your arms up, breathing out, guiding energy down. Mm. It's a lot of times it's slow, repetitive, circular motions um, that that are about essentially, um, you can think of it as a moving meditation or a super gentle exercise. Mm. And it's a, it's a way of, of um, moving your own energy, right? And so there's a zillion different kinds of Qigong that are that are aimed at strengthening different systems of the body that have, and some are more medicinal, some are more for uh, more meditative, um, some don't involve movement at all, but the movement of breath and and so it's, um, but essentially, it's like, yeah, it no stretchy pants required, you can do it in 20 minutes a day or less, or even just a few minutes. A lot of times I'll, I'll just prescribe a breathing exercise for my people to, again, work with the nervous system to help them, be, mm. you know, that if you're feeling tired and fatigued and drained all the time or overwhelmed by life or feeling like you don't have the chi and blood, right, that you don't have the energy that it takes to, to do everything on your plate, you can build that energy from the inside out a lot of times by breathing and holding on the inhale. You know, mm. a, a lot of times if you've got too much energy, if it just feels like like life is too much and you've got all this pent up stagnant energy, some of the best things you can do is to breathe low and to just sink that energy down. So it's a skillful use of working with your breath. Since most people that I know are stressed or overwhelmed yeah. in the world, yeah. not that I know, but most people in general, <laughs> and the people that I know and don't know, can you give us something that we could do like right now that would be 
yeah, a Qigong absolutely. exercise just to give people like a demo. Yeah. So right now I would say just, just notice where your energy is in your body. And if that, and a good way to start noticing that is to just do a quick scan from the top of your head. Just notice uh, what's tight as you scan down through your head, your eyes, your neck, your shoulders, your torso. Notice any places that feel tight, stuck, places where your consciousness doesn't want to enter. Maybe there's a blank spot in your map. All of that can indicate that energy is not flowing well. Notice where your breath is in your body. Is it up in mm. your chest? Is it down in your abdomen? It, as you notice, you might notice that your breath changes uh, mm -hmm. just by bringing your awareness to it. Notice the quality of your breath. Is it choppy? Is it smooth? Um, generally speaking, our nervous systems are going to take on the qualities of the breath. So if we can just make the breath a little bit longer, mm. a little bit slower, a little bit deeper while focusing on perhaps the bottoms of your feet, the soles of your feet, there's a point between that's about a third of the way down from the ball of the foot to the heel called bubbling spring. It's a point that anchors us to the earth. We can feel the top of our head um, thousand or, or hundred meetings, this point where all of the yang energy meets in the body, we can feel these two poles of energy and where they meet in the middle, right below the navel, about halfway between the spine and the front of the abdomen. And just feeling with awareness at these three points, invite the breath to go a little deeper, invite the breath down into the low belly as you inhale. And as you exhale, the belly moves towards the spine. Let's do that just a couple of times, inhaling and inflating the low belly, feeling energy sink, magnetizing down towards that point at the bottom of your feet and towards your sitting bones, exhaling as the belly moves towards the spine. Mm. All of that is just a super simple way of moving energy, moving breath. And it, um, do you feel a little bit more centered? Do you feel like I do? Moved I felt down. Yeah. I felt a lot yeah. of pressure on top of my head and then my mm -hmm. feet felt like cement blocks. And I just right. felt my whole nervous system go, it was like kerplunk, like this yeah. low drop thing that happened. And I was like, Great. Ooh, I Great. like that. That's exactly what most of us need when we're, when we're breathing shallowly, when we're in that sympathetic stressed state, mm -hmm. we need to bring the energy down, we need to root it. And so um, I actually have a free breathing meditation and, and simple Qigong on my website, but uh, um, anyone listening can, can access oh, it, Brody, brodywelch.com forward slash calm Oh, um, good for that world simplest qigong and abdominal breathing meditation and just like what an acupuncturist might do to you on the table right they'll they'll just notice like these are these are areas that um that are uninhabited by your energy and here's where there's a traffic jam yeah that's all that really is happening on the table and i liken yeah. the meridian system to it like a traffic jam and that we need a needle to get in there and clear the yeah. traffic jam. <laughs> exactly. A lot of times it is, yeah, there's, there's, we can think about it as energy is there's either too much in the wrong place, stagnation, or there's yeah. not enough, right? There's not enough because we've been draining ourselves or depleting ourselves mm. doing too much. That's one of the dangers of people pleasing, right? When we think about sort of the, the consequences there is that it means that we, that, that like we get into a state where we don't nourish ourselves with food or we don't get enough sleep. And so we can, th we, so a lot of times, like we can look at the clues that are showing up physiologically, but then it points to a survival strategy that we no longer need and being able to see, okay, right. If I set a boundary and stick to it, like, um, then that, then I get to reclaim what I need to do to, to rebalance myself, right. To reclaim my health. And so it really is integral for us to have the self-awareness that we talk about, um, you know, that you talk about on your show, understanding our tendencies from a Chinese medicine standpoint, for example, earth energy, right. Earth energy is about nurturing. It's about wanting to feed people and support people and be loyal and to show up for everyone. And to, to like the earth itself, just nurturing and giving. Yeah. And when we, and when we do that too much at the expense of ourselves, it's like an exaggeration, right? We become a caricature of ourselves. Yes. And that's where we tend to go out of balance. So mm -hmm. the lesson for an earth element person in Chinese medicine is like, yes, be loyal and nurturing and giving and, and all of that beautiful um, quality that, that mm -hmm. you embody, but you also need to be giving that to yourself, right? And that that's yes. not selfish, right? And so, so that could be a way that a, a, that a practitioner who's working elementally might help um, tap into some of these very grounding earth points, 
Um, we have organ systems that go along with each of the elements. So spleen and stomach channels that can help someone really feel um, that they're their own um, worthy of being nourished. Right. And, mm -hmm. and like, what is truly like, and what does nourishment mean to you? Like, what are the foods that nourish you? What are the actions that you take where you feel fed, where you feel mm -hmm. um, like supported. And so being able to apply that, like, okay, well, this person um, who's feeling, um, like not confident or, or like too spacey, right. That they, they need more of that earth energy or, right. they, or, the, or they're not nourishing themselves or they have issues with food or issues with digestion or like all of that, the, the mental, emotional, and physical all weaving together and being able to unpack it so that we gain insight so that we're able to do life differently in a more strategic way. So how would you just use, that's such a good example. I find that so many of us are people pleasers. Yeah. And we don't put ourselves first. People say that's selfish, which I am so, I, I fight against that. I'm like, it's not selfish. Oh, yeah. Now, again, it's so it's essential, but we don't do that well as humans. You know, selfish yes. is, you know, I'm going to a party and we need all the brownies and not leave yes. any brownies for anyone else. Like that's being yes. selfish or not thinking of anyone else ever. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm just, I suggest to get in balance, but make sure that you're loving and nurturing yourself. So what do you have to say about from a Chinese medicine perspective, how can you help people find that balance with self-care? Self, yeah. I mean, I, yeah, how, yeah. How, how, and not think it's selfish. Like, oh yeah. Well, well, we first do. of all, like I, j if we define self-care, I, I, I even can't even stand the word self-care anymore. I used to consider myself a self-care strategist and I really, yeah. I've, I've shifted more towards essential habits of self-respect mm -hmm. because I believe that how, how would we want someone that we truly loved and respected to take care of herself? Mm -hmm. Right. Um, mm -hmm. or, or themselves that, yeah. that, that we have, um, we all, we all need sort of the, the, the major pillars of health. We all need enough sleep. We all need good nutrition. We all need movement. We all need time alone, um, at time and space to process life. We all need to feel connected to people in our world and we all need to be connected to purpose, right. Um, mm -hmm. that it, like we need, we need meaning in our lives. And so, I like to think about just one of the things that I ask people as, as I'm coaching them from a place of Chinese medicine principles is, is kind of like, what are the missing nutrients there? You know, mm -hmm. like, are, are you chronically depriving yourself of any of those major things, right? Do you force yourself to, uh, do you know that like, do you, you have an intention to go to the gym or do some yoga or get outside for a walk, but you're not doing it because blah, blah, blah. It's like, okay, well, why? Let's look mm -hmm. at, let's look at the why. Let's bridge mm -hmm. that gap because often the why you'll run into a survival strategy of mm. people pleasing or perfectionism or something that you, um, especially as women, right? We're socialized to put everyone else's needs first. We're told it's selfish, all that. And and being able to come back to you also are worthy of basic respect and treating yourself yeah. with the, you know, that that you deserve fun and play. You deserve meaning and connection. You deserve rest. You deserve, you know, like you deserve all of these things. And yet it can be really hard to take a stand for that. And it, so I really like helping people get those get those basic habits on autopilot so that they just happen without us thinking about it or having to put too much energy into it. And then we can free up our energy for other things. Um, but basically, um, but thinking about like, if someone wants to just think about their, their own life, think about your own tendencies, right? Yin and yang. Is, is most of your energy going outward? Um, are you driving and striving too much? Do you believe that you need to make more money or do more uh, or um, or have more output in order to be okay? Um, you know, or is your energy too yin? Like, are you hiding? Are you not mm. showing up with, you know, mm -hmm. are you not in touch with your voice or your power? Are you not asserting yourself enough? Like those, that's just fundamentally yin and yang. And so, and being able to work with those energetics, right? That you can yeah. cultivate them, right? Knowing, okay, like, yeah, here are the areas in life where I really show up with power and strength and, um, and love, you know, and here's areas where I don't, you know, and so thinking about like the different dimensions of life, because some, you know, obviously different circumstances bring out different parts of who we are. Sure, and, sure. Yeah. So and thinking about um, one of the most basic and important skills that I teach my patients, apart from breathing, because that's the bridge between the parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous system. So important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is this idea of checking in with yourself on a regular basis. <clears throat> so checking in, how am I doing physically? 
right? Where, where just that little body scan that we did earlier with the Qigong, mm-hmm. like just taking yourself on a little guided tour. Where is my breath? What am I feeling right now? Where am I feeling it? What's going on in my mind? You know, mm. it's just like checking in with yourself on these different levels frequently. You don't have yeah. to hang out there. You don't have to do like a long, deep meditation. But most people are moving so fast that we don't even bother to pause and catch up with ourselves. And that's really the essence is that uh, the breath also helps us stay connected to the present because we can't breathe from the past or from the future or for the future. And it's the heart in Chinese so medicine that needs to integrate all of it. And if and the heart is like, there's this concept in Chinese medicine of emptiness, right? That mm. emptiness allows for the fullness of life. But unless you are like, if you're still full of what happened last week or a minute ago, you're not here to experience the joy, the pain, the the reality of Mm -hmm. what's in front of you. And so it's going to be harder to to address it. You're going to be reacting more than responding. And so practicing coming to presence more often, practicing showing up for ourselves Mm -hmm. um, with simple check-ins and really like basic, simple stuff, not overriding your body's need to pee or drink water, you know, like right. the absolute right. basics. These are, are how we start to develop um, a respectful dialogue with our bodies. Mm-hmm. And then from there, a lot of times what happens when people come to me wanting to like, say, um, develop a meditation practice or lose weight or, um, mm-hmm. or balance their hormones to have an easier menopause or like whatever these things, they find that when they start doing these super basic things, that it empowers them to, to basically do all the things that make them feel healthy, alive, and, and truly themselves. So it really is, I think, a feedback loop where when we start to be in respectful dialogue, embodying self-respect by mm-hmm. honoring our yin and listening to our bodies and processing our emotions as they arise, instead of denying our humanity and pretending we're machines, which we're not, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. That, that we start to, um, we, we start to show up differently in the world and in a happier, healthier way. Mm, I love that. Thank you so much. This was awesome. Awesome. Where could pe- where can people find you if they want to learn more about like what you do, et cetera, et cetera? BrodyWelch.com. Brody with an IE, Welch with a CH is where my offerings live, where people can grab that free meditation. And also my podcast, A Healthy Curiosity on Being Well in a Busy World, self-care strategies from Chinese medicine, Ayurveda, functional medicine, yoga traditions. Um, it's, a, it's a big uh, mishmash of things that, um, that are issues that I think um, everyone trying to live in this modern world uh, can benefit from. And I would just really, anyone listening, it is, it is my mission in life to help you be good to yourself. And so if any of this is resonating, um, I hope that you think of one small way that you can support yourself, one small like a shift in the direction of yin or in the direction of yang that you could make today to start steering yourself in the direction of health and balance. Mm, yeah, what, something small. And I love something that small. because yeah. you don't have to make this giant leap into no. someone that you're not. And I think that's hard when people are, let's you just use people pleasers, codependent, whatever it might be. And I don't like labels, but we know the, the types of actions that we do on a daily basis and how we show up if we are in that category. And if we can shift a little bit out of that tiny bit today, and then the next day, we're going to find a great change just in a matter of one month's yes. time, but we got to start waking up to how we're showing up. And if we're out of balance, it's time to start making a change. So even five minutes, right? Five yes. minutes of breathing, five minutes of journaling, yes. five minutes to process emotions, five minutes of movement. It all matters and it all counts. It really does. This was really good. Thank you, Brody. I appreciate it's it. It's such a pleasure, Michelle. I love chatting with you and I love introducing people to Chinese medicine. So thank you so much for the opportunity. You are welcome. Thanks for being here. All right. See, that was so good. It was really fun to have Brody on. I hope that you enjoyed learning a little bit more about Chinese medicine and how you can find greater balance in your life practicing some of these things. And maybe if you feel so inclined to do so, to find someone that practices Chinese medicine as a compliment to maybe what you're already doing. So, and don't forget, you guys, 
go to theadultchair.com forward slash TAC gatherings for more information on what we are calling our adult chair gatherings or something like an adult chair meetup in your area. We'd love to have you join us or have you even lead a group anywhere in the whole entire world. So let us know. We are building this out and we love bringing people that practice and love the adult chair together. And this is the way we are doing it. So it's hundred percent free. So we hope you join us and I hope you join me next week. I will see you sitting right here in the adult chair.